Hallelujah. We come here to praise and lift up your name. We give you our lives, Lord, because we want to be where you are. We are living to live again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah. You, we thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord. Oh, in this Christmas season, Lord, we will not forget. Jesus is the reason. He is the reason for my very being as well as this Christmas season, Lord. And so, Lord, I ask you right now, let the words of my mouth and, and let the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords, Lord. These are your people, Lord. They need a word from you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Send your word, Lord. But more importantly, Lord, send your understanding for your word. So they may take that word, Lord, and, and use it in their lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Repeat after me. I will open my mind. I will listen to the spoken word. I will read and follow in the written word. We'll understand how the word is used and explained. And I will use this word for myself. And I will use this word for myself. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. God is a good God. Amen. Thank God for each and every one of you here, those faces that I recognize and those that I do not. God bless you. God bless you. Well, the next time I will see you, if the Lord says I will see you, we'll, there will be, we would have served uh, or celebrated another Christmas. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's look at Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 35. And I'm also going to go right to Matthew 1, 19 to 21. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what this word will mean to some of you here. All I know is I've done it like three times and for whatever reason the computer just erased it the first time and, and the second time I got some kind of computer language that it was transformed it into that I couldn't even read. And so I had to keep going back and, and putting it back together. Amen. So Luke 1, 30 to 35, and then Matthew 1, 19 to 21. Luke 1, 30, 35 reads, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth the Son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. 
Matthew 1, 19 to 21. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, we, we have been talking about seals and purpose and, 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 and leading up to this day. We see here that there is a purpose that is placed on Mary and a purpose that is placed on Mary that is then revealed to Joseph. And we think about those seals. Now, you, you have to understand that seal is something that helps to preserve what is within. So that it can remain fresh and unchanged. We know that God places his seals on his seal on his people. Right? And we see here that the seal is in to preserve purpose. And so we see Mary is given purpose. Mary is given purpose. And then the Holy Ghost is then added to both seal her purpose to ensure that Jesus comes forth so that he would be ready for his purpose. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Romans 8 and 28 says this. It says, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. We are all called according to the purpose of Christ. And then all things that we use, all spiritual things that we use for this calling to accomplish this purpose will work together. I like this in John 26 and 27, because as we're talking about that particular seal, the writer here uh, makes us think about things that spoil. I, I didn't pick that up the first time, but the writer puts our, our, uh, our attention and makes us think about things that don't have a long-lasting life, long-lasting shelf life. Let, let's look at this. John 6 and 27 says, but don't be concerned about perishable things like food. I want you to think about things that don't have a long shelf life, things that won't last long once you open it. It says, spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you, for God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. So, so don't spend your time, uh, uh, you know, being too concerned about stuff that, 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 that spoils, but, but, but get yourself in the mind of, if I, if I get this purpose and I, and, and I get this seal from the, the Holy Spirit, then, then I can remain fresh. You know that word that, 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 that says, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you may reap if you faint not. It's not up there, but, but, but see that, that when, when you begin getting weary, you start getting stale. When you start getting weary, then, 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 then it, it, it's kind of like, you know, you, you, you're really not good for anybody. Because you're really not good for yourself. So you got to be careful. With the, don't, don't allow church work, hallelujah, to get you tired from coming to hear the word. There's a difference in that. There's a, there's a difference. And, and we all appreciate, uh, uh, Elder Richard uh, uh, came up and talked about, you know, that was what, what, what we did for the families and the funerals. I mean, you know, that, that, that was love. That was, that was church work. That was, that was work. Folk came out and did work. 
But you don't, you don't go to that and be like, well, I ain't coming to get no word. I ain't coming. I ain't. You was in the kitchen all down there. You didn't come up and hear the word for the, 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 the even that the eulogist gave. You was, you was working. But you don't allow the work to, to keep you from the word. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm just tired. They, they spoke got me tired. But no, you need to stop working, not coming to the word. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That ain't even my message, but <laughs> it'll work. It'll work for a minute. So what's the purpose of Christmas? Cause, cause, because Christmas has a purpose, right? You celebrate it on December 25th. And folks will get you into an argument, and, and well, Jesus wasn't born on the 25th, and, and, and I can prove it. Well, so what? When do you celebrate it then? <laughs> Just get, give me the date you celebrate it. You're going to keep arguing with me that it ain't celebrated on the 25th. Because it's not the date, what it is, it's the purpose behind it. it <laughs> folks will drag you in that, and you'll, be, you'll leave out all frustrated and be. <laughs> but it's celebrated as Jesus' birthday, right? It's a, it's a time to reflect on why he came. It, it's a time to reflect on what it means between, for, 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 for me and you. It, it, it's a ref, time to reflect on, 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 on just being blessed, right? And, 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 and so, the world has changed the purpose, and, and, and we have to be we have to be care, careful about that because it's a time that we reflect on the scripture when, when the angel said to to Mary that 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 holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God, right? Shall be called Jesus. Shall be called the Son of God. It, it was about the birth. It was about uh, uh, her being anointed. It was about you know, and 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 the fact that Christmas is celebrated pretty much. I mean, you have these holidays that you know Thanksgiving. You know, that's the United States. You have, you know you 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 have these certain holidays that we we we, we celebrate that they're not celebrated all over the world. Even during Easter time, I mean, you know, it's, it, it, they're not set up so that everybody, right? But, but think about this. Christmas, no matter where you are, no matter in what part of the country you're in, it's Christmas time, right? You know, you can be on a, in a hot beach somewhere and got Christmas trees up. They got Christmas lights on palm trees they, in Australia, in England, and wherever you are at. Why? It, it, it would make you think, who? The world reverences Christ, right? Oh, I, I wish it was so. You know, you get benefits uh, uh, that honor this day, right? You, you, you get the day off. If, if you don't get the day off, you get time and a half. You know, kids are off for the most, most amount of time that they are off throughout the entire school year. I ain't talking about summertime. I'm talking about while school is in session. They get two weeks off, right? You would think that the world reverences Jesus, but they don't. They, 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 they don't. When you look around, uh, Christmas is, is, has been repurposed because it is a huge commercial event. Amen. Right? You know, it, it, it's such a huge commercial event that, that you know, they, they start, you start Christmas music, not after Thanksgiving anymore. You, you, you get it after uh, Halloween now. They go straight from Halloween to, to Christmas. Why? Because it's a huge commercial event, right? Everybody needs to be home during this time. Why? To spend money. Everybody needs to be off. Everybody needs to be thinking about Christmas. Why? Because folks are thinking about Christmas presents. It's a billion dollars a year spent on gifts for children, family, friends. Folks will go into debt, open up new credit cards just to go into debt to buy gifts that you're going to feel sorry that you bought it on New Year's Day. Oh, why did I do that? Why did I buy that? Why did I? And, 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 and Christmas is so important that, you know, they, they, they decided that, you know what, we want to we wanna make sure we don't offend nobody. We want to make sure we attract everybody. You know, we, it, this is not about Jesus and his miraculous birth. This is about the dollar. 
right? So, so over the years, guess what's been happening to, to water down the true meaning of Christmas? You got, you know, Christmas, you can say Christmas or you can say Xmas. You are right, you, and, and you got Christmas trees you used to have, but now you just have holiday trees. You, you know, Jewish folk have a tr- Hanukkah bush. I mean, they, they just do anything, and it'll look just like a Christmas tree, but they'll call it a Hanukkah bush. It, does, it doesn't matter anymore. You go to school, and you used to go to your kids' Christmas programs. Now you go to the winter concerts and the winter festivals. They just they want to take Christ out of it all. Christmas lights is holiday lights. People used to go around and say, Merry Christmas. Now they just say, Happy Holiday. Because they want you to have a happy holiday. They want you to feel good about the time because they want you to spend your money. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Nativity scenes that, 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 that used to have the Jesus and Mary and, 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 and the shepherds. Amen. Amen. Now you just got Santa Claus and reindeer. Uh, 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 Chris Kringle is the, is the reason for the season, not Jesus. You, you, you shoehorn in Hanukkah and you shoehorn in Kwanzaa uh, all on this time so that you could uh, 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 lose focus of the thought of why Christmas is the reason, why Jesus is the reason for Christmas. I even look at that, y'all remember, um, uh, 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 Roberto Duran, remember when he fought the second time and he said, what did he say? No mas, right? He said no more, right? So you got Chris Moss, and so it should be thinking about more of Christ. Amen. You know, it should be a time that we're thinking about more of Christ, but, but, but because it's being converted, you even have Saint Santa, and if you mix those words up, it'll turn into Satan. I mean, everything that we can to get our minds off of more of Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But the scriptures I gave you uh, took, to, to, took you back to 2,000 years ago and, and, and to get our minds focused back on when the angel said to Mary that holy thing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, I wonder why did the, the, the angel not say, you know, that, that baby you will be carrying. Or, or, or it wasn't a baby yet, but it was, it was just something that was, was going to be conceived. And, and it says, that holy thing. Some of y'all don't even like being called a thing. Jesus was called a thing before he was even born. So said, that holy thing, which shall be born of thee, shall be called Jesus, shall be called the Son of of God. And so I, I, we, I want to I wanna just bring us back. I know some of you are like, come on, Pastor, I got to get to some holiday shopping. I, it's my last, it's the last week that I have. I got I to gotta, I gotta get over there to Walmart. I got to get over there. Could you just hurry up a bit? But, but if I could just focus you in on the reason right now, the true, the true reason, if you just give me a few more minutes. When we look at that scripture that we read in verse 30, it was important because Mary was now endued with purpose. Mary was, Mary was just a, 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 a woman that felt that she had the best thing that ever happened to her that was going to happen to her. Somebody asked her to marry her. That was at the point, that was one of the best things that had ever happened to her. And, 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 it, and it happened, praise the Lord, that, 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 that she was a virgin. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Even in that day, it wasn't, it wasn't a norm. Even in that day, it wasn't something that was uh, 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 just an automatic. Yeah, was it 2,000 years ago she was a virgin? Well, everybody was. No, they wasn't. Mary was. And Mary had, had, had been, somebody had asked her to marry her. The Bible says that Mary found favor or she found her purpose with God. That's an important thing because, you know, as we reflect to get more of Christ, we need to be reflecting on how do we get our purpose with God. I mean, I want, I want some favor with God, and so I want, I want my purpose with, with God. Well, she was called. She was chosen, right? You see, you know, and, and, and we have to understand, and, you know, we, we went on over this in Bible study, and, 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 and a lot of people say, well, what's the difference between called and chosen? You know, and, and, and you know, We've been twisted. 
people have us twisted because the, the, the chosen, are, we are all called. And in the scripture where it said, many are, uh, few are called, but I mean, many are called, but few are chosen. Chosen wasn't a good thing to be. The purpose, if you look in that scripture, you'll find that the only place in the Bible, you'll find that that person was chosen to leave. That person was chosen, and they said, you're going to go to, into darkness, and there'll be gnashing of teeth. So I'm just imagining hell. So when we start thinking about chosen, and we start thinking of, about special people, no, no, all of us are called, and all of us are chosen. I know some of y'all looking strange, like, ooh, I, you know, that's been the world. The world gets into the church and try to make some people uh, exalt themselves over others and try to say, I'm chosen. Not so. Why? Let's look in 1 Peter 2 and, and 2 and 9. Because Mary was chosen, y'all. Mary was chosen. But you can be chosen too. You can be called by God. You can have purpose with God. Look, look. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation. Now, well, that should just sold it right now. You're just a chosen generation. That's everybody, right? A royal priesthood. A holy nation. That's talking about everybody that is, is, is ex, that's going to be accepting their person, purpose with God and, and, and sealed with the Holy Spirit. A holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. So you are both chosen and called. Don't let nobody fool you no more. And, well, you've been called, but I'm chosen. I'm called and chosen too, so now what? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 4, according as he has chosen me. What? According to he has chosen them. Come on, y'all. Are y'all reading with me or what? According as he has chosen us. It's not him. It's not them. It's not somebody. It's he has chosen us. I'm chosen. I've been chosen by God. I've been chosen to accomplish something. See, you need to stand up and say, I'm chosen. I, I, I'm important to God. See, see, if you don't say it, then you can't believe it, and nobody else will believe you've been chosen by God. Nobody else will believe you have something special in you that God put in you to be accomplished by you for him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So the next time somebody try to quote you Matthew 22 and 14, and they try to tell you, well, for many are called, but few are chosen, you just tell them, well, I'm sorry, I don't want to be chosen like that man was chosen, because that man was chosen to get out the sight of the king. But I want to be chosen to be in the sight of the king. I want to be chosen to do the work of the king. I want to be, oh, I want to be chosen to be acceptable in the sight of the king. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I'm just telling y'all a little bit about Christmas. I'm just telling you what you should be feeling on this day and should be thankful for, for, for what uh, uh, God did through Mary for you this day. Well, not this day, but the day of Christmas, amen. Christmas day. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Let, let's look at verse 31 because... As we find that we are all called and, and we find we are all chosen, we find that we all have purpose in God. You got to feel that. I got purpose in God. I don't care how, how lost you've been feeling. I don't care how, how, how unpurposeful you've been feeling. I don't care if you've been feeling like, uh, that. Uh, what, uh, what is my purpose in life? Let me tell you something. You have purpose in, in life and you're in the right place to find it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, so she had, she found purpose, but then the, 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 the angel said to her in verse 31, it says, thou shalt conceive and bring forth. Why is that so important? Because there are a lot of people that conceive, but don't bring forth. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, 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 conception does not automatically mean birth. Y'all, y'all, y'all going, y'all acting deep. Some folk going, oh me, you know, if you can't say amen, say oh me, oh my. Amen. But, but even in the natural, yes. even in the natural, you know, some folks say, well, I, I ain't ready to have a baby, so they get an abortion. They abort what God put in them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Some people miscarry. Don't know what the reason is, don't know why, it just it just doesn't go from conception to birth. And so it was important that he said you will both conceive and bring forth. Some of us, not in the natural, but in the spiritual, God has put something in you and you're just carrying it around. It's been time for you to bring forth, but you're just still carrying it around. You impregnated with something God wants you to bring forth, and for whatever reason, I, I, I don't think I'm ready. I, it ain't the time. I, you just, you just, it, 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 like the natural was nine months and ready to go. You, you, you didn't pass nine months. You ten months. You, you eleven months. You, you twelve months, and you still hanging on to keeping it inside. And it's time. The word talks about this in Second Timothy. 3 and 7. He says, there's some of us that are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You just keep bringing it in. You keep taking it in. You keep taking it in. You keep taking it in. But the truth is, it's time for you to burst it and you just never come out. It ain't, it ain't. God don't mean for me to do it. God is for somebody else's. No, it's not. He put it in you. The truth is, it's in you. The truth is, God wants you to accomplish it. The truth is, it's your purpose, but you just, it ain't, it ain't time. It ain't. Everybody keeps coming up to you. People keep prophe prophesying to you. People be looking at you saying, Woo, you, it's all over you. You got, you, you, you got the glow on you. you. You should be doing this, and you're looking at that. No, that ain't me. <laughs> no, go on, girl. It's in you, and you don't want it to come out because you're scared. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You don't want it to come out because you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want it to come out because, because you don't want folk to talk about you. You don't want it to come out, come out because the people you're hanging around with, they don't know nothing about church. They don't, they, they don't know nothing about Jesus, and, and you're scared. But you're going to lose some folks that's, that's holding you back. Because you'll never reach your full uh, potential without Jesus in your life. Right. Hebrews 5 and 12. For when, for, for when, for the time you ought to be in your purpose. For when the time you ought to be teaching. See, some of you need to be out teaching people. Some of you need to be out in your purpose. That's the teacher is a purpose. Teacher is a gift. Teacher is something that God put in you to come out of you, and it says at the time when you should be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. The time you need to be praisers, at the time you need to be worshipers, at the time you need to be a mighty woman of God, at the time you need to be a mighty man of God, you have need to be taught again. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as, as such need of milk and not strong meat. You at a point in your life where you, you, you need to be Taking in strong meat. You need to be taking in strong word. You need to be able to take it in and you need to be able to give it out. I get to Bible study sometime and I say, okay, y'all, let's talk about what we talked about last week. And, and, and folks are like, because you haven't looked at it since last week. You haven't studied it. You haven't, you haven't took that meat out and chewed on it. All you want is some milk that you can just suck down and it just go down smooth. But the Bible says that it's time for you to get off the milk and be able to chew and eat the meat. I'm going to 
I'm not worthy. I'm not ready. I just don't, I just don't want to do it. I, what? That is not a reason to not do what God has put in you to do. I just don't feel like it. I don't have the time. Really? Because the last time I checked, every minute and second that you do have, God gave that to you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We just like that man in Matthew 25 and 18. Remember, uh, uh, he, but he that had one re- received one. What? He digged in the earth and hid what the Lord had given him. He hid the talent, right? Why did he do it in, in 25? Because I was afraid. You ain't the only one that God has given something to, and you're afraid to use it, and so you just hide it. Everybody in here that is not doing something for God, you have hidden what God has given you. And I'm just going to let you know, God is not pleased. I know Mary probably wished she could have hid what God gave to her. Jo- Joseph wished she could have he she could have hid it too. He was mad. He's about to he's about to kick her to the curb. You pregnant by God? Yeah, right. It ain't never happened before. I don't remember nobody talking about they was pregnant by God. And so it was, an, it was, a, it was something that, that, that she wasn't ready for, Joseph wasn't ready for, but, but, but she, she had to carry it with pride. When are you going to carry what God has put in you with pride? When is it going to stop being a burden? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Verse 32 and verse, verse, well, I'm going back to 32 and 33. Let me see those verses, 32 and 33. Word of God says, oh, thank you, Jesus. I got 32 and 33. Let me see it. Come on, put it up. And he shall be great. And shall be called the son of God. See, see, the thing is, when we look past this, he's talking about, uh, uh, he's talking about the purpose that has been put in Mary. But think about you. The purpose that is going to be put in you, it's going to be great. What God has purposed in you and conceived in you, that, that, that you will allow to be birthed in you, it will be great. Because automatically, anything that God gives you that you allow to be birthed in you, it will be great. See, your problem is you are comparing uh, uh, greatness of the world to greatness of God. See, our standards for great, they've been messed up and and, and confused with the world. The world says great means a lot of people. The world says great means, uh, 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 you know, uh, just success and fame. But, But God says, I'll go back and look for the one. If what God puts in you is designed just to find the one, then it's great in his eyes. In verse 34, Mary goes, how? He goes, how? I mean, how? I mean, and, and I'm not sure if, 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 you know, if an angel came and, 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 well, it wouldn't have came to me, but, but I'm just saying, I'm not sure if, if, if this explanation would have been s- sufficient. I mean, how am I going to be pregnant because I don't know a man? Well, the Holy Ghost is going to come and overshadow the end. Okay, how am I going to get pregnant? That's what I'm trying to say. But it wasn't for her to understand how. It was just for her to just say, well, be it unto you according to, according to that word, be it unto me according to that word, be it unto me. I mean, it was just according, it was just up to her to just say, Lord, if, if it be, if, if that's what you want from me, if that's going to be what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. And then I'm not going to worry about how it's going to be done. I'm not going to be worried about how it's going to be received. I'm not going to. 
How is it possible? That's, what, that, that's what's holding a lot of y'all back right now. How is it possible? And so she, she said, you, you're going to be, Mary, you're going to be overshadowed. You're going to be overshadowed. Well, what, think about that. That means that if, I, if, if I'm overshadowed, that means that there, there, there is something that is greater than me that's casting a shadow on me that, that's covering me. I'm being overshadowed. I'm being covered by something that's greater. I don't have to worry about it. I don't even have to worry about, I don't even have to worry about anything getting on me because it's just overshadowing me. Wherever I move, I'm covered. So I'm overshadowed. Thank you, Jesus. And then in verse 35, as I looked at, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power. The Holy Ghost. They said, it shall come upon thee. Well, we get that too, right? Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Same thing, same thing Mary got, I get it. Same thing Mary got to, to secure her purpose and to seal her purpose, I get too. Well, thank you, Jesus, you get it too. Hallelujah. And then it says, that promise, that holy thing which shall be born of thee, it shall be. And you got to think what you've been struggling with. It, what, what, what have you trying to hide? What have you been afraid of? And you've got to let it go. Christmas is the time to be thinking about what your purpose is. Because Mary accomplished her purpose. You want to get a gift, accomplish your purpose. We, we, we getting gifts and giving gifts that ain't done nothing. And it ain't even your birthday. At least if you're going to get a gift, accomplish the purpose that God put in your life like Mary did for her. Uh, Pastor, sit on down. Sit on down. I'm tired. It shall be. That holy thing, that, that thing which shall be born of thee shall be. Shall be what? Shall be anything and everything that God said it's going to be. How's it going to be? What if you allow the conception to take place? Right? You receive that purpose. And then you allow it to grow. Just because you get the, we talked about it before, right? You get the purpose, but it's not the time. So you've got to allow it to grow. You've got to allow it to be nurtured. You've got to allow, you know, you, at the time that you should be a teacher, right? Well, there's a time when you're a student first. And there's a time that you're learning, and there's a time that then you're assistant teacher, and, and a time where you're a student helper, then you're assistant teacher, and then you become the teacher. And so there's a time that you need to grow. Some of y'all won't even grow. Some of y'all won't even, will you say the prayer? I ain't ready to do prayer. Will you read a scripture? I don't know what to read. Open up the Bible. Have this conception. Then it's time for, then, then it has to grow. And then it, when it's time, it has to be born. Why? When something is ready to be born, it, it, it's going to let you know. You don't just walk around talking about, well, I guess it's time to have this baby. I'll go. Women, no, women don't be talking about that. Be like, get it out, get it out. It lets you know when it's time to come out. Some of y'all wondering about why, why you feel a certain way, why, why you're not satisfied, you know, you're not satisfied doing what you're doing anymore. Why? Because uh, uh, it's time for something to come out. When it's here, it will accomplish what God wanted to, it to accomplish. I mean, God said there that, that was, that was, that was three things, and I'm going to end it with these last few scriptures. In John 3, 16, Y'all know this one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We take this scripture and we always apply it to Easter. But Christmas is when he gave us his son. Christmas, is he, that's when he gave us his son. 
But he, it was only of God that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That was the promise. And then if we look at that Matthew 1 and 21, when, when the angels was talking to Joseph about his son Jesus, he said, he shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Why are there so many people trying to uh, uh, save themselves from sin and then come to church? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to come when I get myself together. I'm going to come when I stop doing this. I'm going to come when I stop doing that. You can't. You can't stop. That's why Jesus came so that he could save us from our sins. I have to come to him just as I am and say, Lord, I'm tired of being the way I am. And I've been trying to change, but I can't. He said, good, that's, why I want you to, that, that, that's where I want you to be. I want you to be tired of who you are and, and don't try to change. Don't try to change that at all. Just come to me and then allow the spirit uh, of God to be placed in you through me and to give you the power you need to begin the change. So many people got it mixed up that, you know, well, I, I, maybe like I ain't even going into church. It's going to be a lightning bolt going to come down on me. I ain't Guess what? If there was lightning bolts, we all would be hit. Yeah. If it was lightning bolts for sinners coming in the church, it would be a, one for each one of us. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. No perfect people in here. But we got people in here that have accepted Jesus Christ and he has saving us from the sin in our lives. Yeah. And making it easier and easier to die daily of that sin. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because of this last scripture, don't get it twisted. You, we ain't, we're not giving anybody a pass for sinning. We're giving you a way out of sin through Jesus. Romans 6 and 23, my last scripture says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift, we're still talking about Christmas. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That was the gift that was given. That's the meaning of Christmas. That Jesus came so that I could be saved from my sins. He came that I could have a way out of my sin. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, you're standing. Amen. We're standing. The wages of sin is death. You got a choice. Collect your wage or to receive a gift. And all of us, all of us want to, we want a gift on Christmas. But why don't you get the gift that was the true meaning of Christmas? Why don't you get the gift of eternal life on Christmas? I know folks are saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. There is no ready. There is no ready. There is the one question. If you were to die today, do you know if you're going to heaven or to hell? And if you want to go to heaven, don't, don't start thinking about all the messed up stuff you did. Don't start thinking about all the messed up stuff that's still at your house when you get back to it. Don't, get, don't think about how, you know, just how dysfunctional you are. Because we're in a dysfunctional world with dysfunctional people. But Jesus is there to save us from our sin. And believe it or not, it's sin that makes us dysfunctional. It's sin. Every mixed up dysfunctional thing has just been Satan trying to confuse us and try to replace us. What's real, what's what's fake. If you want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, and you want to receive the real gift that should be given on Christmas Day, 
Let me just show you how easy it is. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand with me right now. If you're not sure that you are going to heaven if you were to die today, I'm going to make that clear. I'm just asking you right now to raise your hand with me. If you want to go to heaven, raise your hand with me right now. Amen. Amen. I want to go to heaven. 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 I don't want to be unsure of if I'm going to heaven or hell. Tomorrow's not promised. All right, those hands that are there right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody else, every head bowed, every eye closed. We are going to pray for them right now as they pray this prayer. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Repeat after me, those with the hands up, Father, in the name of Jesus. I accept your son as my personal savior. I confess him now as my Lord. I believe in my heart that he was raised from the dead and he saves me from my sin. I accept him in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, you did the, the hardest part. You did the hardest part that can be done for a Christian. That was the hardest part. The rest is just becoming who you have already been purposed to be. Jesus. Now I saw I saw some hands. I saw some hands go up. If your hand went up, I saw the hands. Everybody else didn't see all the hands. I saw the hands. I need you to come up when we dismiss, I'll be up here. I want to shake your hand and welcome you into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know that when you leave here, the devil is going, the first thing he's going to try to make you believe is that it wasn't real. It wasn't real. But I'm going to tell you right now, it was. And I'm going to let you know how you're going to know that it was real. This is how you're going to know. You're going to try to do some sin that you used to be comfortable with. It's just going to come up on you. It's going to, and you won't be comfortable anymore. It won't feel the same anymore. It won't feel the same anymore. You, you'll feel shame now. That's how you're going to know. You're not going to have some glow walking around and some light following you everywhere you go. The light's going to be in here. It's going to be in here. And day by day, day by day, you're just going to want to do better. You're just going to want more. And that's when you're going to have to get your Bible out. That's when you're going to have to come to a Bible-believing church or a Bible study so that you can get more and more understanding about that. You won't know it all. You're going to act like you do, but you won't know it all. Amen, amen. Woo! Don't. Don't let this world make you shame of saying Merry Christmas. Don't make this world make you stop lifting up the name of Jesus. Don't make this world tell you happy holidays and you just go, well, happy holiday back to you because I don't want to offend you. I don't care if you see somebody with, with, with Arab garb on. I don't care. My name is... Muhammad Mustafa, I don't care. 
Merry Christmas, Muhammad. I don't let what you believe stop me from believing what I believe. Merry Christmas, Benjamin Stein. I don't care. You don't believe in Jesus. You believe in how? I don't care. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Love on one another. I didn't tell you not to give gifts. Don't be going home talking about pastor said, I know I'm not supposed to give a gift. And you blame it on me. But receive the gift. Receive it. Receive it. And then you can give it with love. Don't go into debt. Bible already taught. Don't go into debt. Don't.